there is now growing interest in cities that are regenerative. That is, cities that develop an environmentally enhancing, restorative relationship with the natural systems whose resources they depend on. In this film, we are thinking about the role of the nexus in moving towards the regenerative city. A nexus is a connection or series of connections linking two or more things. In the context of our cities, the nexus concept can be useful in helping us to think about how things that we take for granted are reliant upon each other, and how those relationships can be used to make cities more regenerative by developing an environmentally enhancing, restorative relationship with the natural systems whose resources they depend on. At the most basic level, humans need food and water to survive. Over thousands of years, we have also gradually become more and more reliant on external sources of energy for cooking, providing warmth and light, and processing materials. When people lived in small, dispersed communities, they could get all the food, water and energy they needed from their local area. In fact, they had no choice. However, now that the global population has grown and become concentrated in cities and urban areas, this link with the local area has been broken, forcing many of us to rely on imported water, energy and food. Indeed, the supply of these three commodities has become ever more complex and interrelated. For example, if energy is scarce, we may be unable to produce and distribute food or fresh water. We burn fossil fuels to provide energy, and those fossil fuels release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere when they are burnt. The increase in carbon dioxide in our atmosphere affects our climate in complex ways that can cause flooding or drought, heat waves and more storms, all of which have an impact on our supply of food and water. Our increasing demand for food means that in the past 50 years our agricultural production has increased by up to 300%, whilst the area used to produce it has only grown by 12%. This increased productivity means that agriculture now accounts for 70% of all water withdrawn from aquifers, streams and lakes, and has resulted in reduced soil quality and biodiversity. We also need energy to produce artificial fertilisers to feed our crops and to power agricultural equipment to support this productivity and vehicles to distribute the food. As a result, there is a clear link between the price of oil and the price of food. Encouraged by bodies like the World Economic Forum, the Nexus concept has grown in prominence over the past five years as a way of thinking about trade-offs and interdependencies between food, energy and water. It is very helpful in guiding thinking about the interlinked nature of the problems of our cities and, crucially, avoiding the pitfalls of silo thinking. Silo thinking is a very common human trait where people try to solve problems in isolated silos without thinking about the wider consequences. For example, imagine you have a stomach ache and you want to feel better. If you take a pill that cures your stomach ache but gives you a headache, you do not feel better and have just used silo thinking to exchange one problem for another. Similarly, we could make narrow decisions about particular city systems without thinking about the consequences for other systems within the city, or the opportunities of working in a more efficient way together. For example, New York wanted to detect who was responsible for illegally dumping used cooking oil into the sewers. To do this, the city began aggregating disparate data on environmental pollution, tax returns, business licenses and kitchen fires. Not only were they able to find the perpetrators, but they were able to persuade these businesses to sell the used oil to biodiesel recyclers for profit instead of dumping it. Those using silo thinking and analysis seek to simplify, to reduce complexity. Those employing systems thinking absorb complexity and diversity, making the whole stronger. A number of studies of the Nexus approach examine these interdependencies, yet they often suffer from a lack of insight into subjective decision-making by the people involved. A second and related problem is the lack of research on systemic shocks to interdependent networks. A storm drain failing during a flood may create chaos in the localised transportation and wastewater networks, 
which could have wider food and energy impacts for nearby hospitals, schools and care homes. Systemic and cascading shocks are often overlooked in much academic research, yet they are an inevitable consequence of the complex and tightly coupled systems that make up the modern world. It is here that innovative information and communication technologies, or ICTs, could be seen as an overarching system to help in our thinking about the management of these complex dynamic relationships. A third problem is the lack of translation being undertaken for designers, engineers and policy makers attempting to apply the highly academic and philosophical outputs of some studies, many of which can skirt around the difficulties of implementation. Fourth, many researchers can overlook the manifestations of power relations and strategic behaviour and interest. Understandably, researching the hidden motivations behind certain decisions can be very difficult and problematic. However, the benefits of understanding these complex relationships are too great to be ignored.